for every presentation you, you attended, you can uh, vote for the best presentation on, from the website or the web application, or the, the, sorry, the mobile application. Uh, you don't have to remember the address. And now we are going to uh, start another presentation with two, two speakers. This time we have uh, Nikita Ilfranski and Martin Mager, uh, from the, uh, both, both working in Red Hat for the Jetwork Global Stack Team, uh, two different sub-projects. Sub and they will introduce us to the wonderful world of OpenStack. <laughs> Thanks. So hello, everyone. This is going to be the first uh, OpenStack-related talk. Uh, I'm going to have just the first uh, half of it. Uh, I'm going to talk about OpenStack in general and about OpenStack architecture. Then Martin is going to uh, talk about Backstack and how we can use it to easily deploy OpenStack. And then there's going to be another OpenStack talk about the deployment solution, which is right now being developed upstream. So let's start with OpenStack. What is OpenStack? OpenStack is uh, open source infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure as a service means it's like a cloud operating system, um, meaning you can spin up lots of VMs easily, and not only VMs, but also related uh, functionality like storage and uh, virtual networking. It's currently composed of nine components. It used to be uh, less, and it's planned to be more. So it's, it's really growing uh, fast. Um, daily there's more change happening that um, one, can, one person can follow, so people specialize in into uh, working on particular components. So let's take a look at the components. Um, the heart of OpenStack is called Keystone. It's an identity service. It does user regis it uh, has user registry, does user management, and uh, also authentication and authorization services. And it also serves as a component registry uh, so that the components can find each other easily where they are running. Uh, the probably biggest uh, OpenStack component is Nova, and it's uh, the component that, that takes care of uh, launching virtual machines. And uh, it's really designed to, s uh, as anything in OpenStack is designed to scale a lot uh, across hundreds or thousands of nodes. Then it's image service, Glance, uh, which stores images uh, for use within Nova. This means either bare, uh, op bare operating system images or already images uh, that users created with some pre-installed software, or it can be, for example, VM snapshots. Another component is object storage, Swift. Uh, that is for saving uh, large binary data or uh, unstructured data. It's basically a key value storage. It's best suited for data that you uh, upload once and fetch many times. <coughs> so for example, uh, one of the good examples of what data you can store in a glance is uh, VM images, uh, sorry, in Swift is VM images, so it can serve as a backend for glance. Then it's block storage, which is uh, virtual volumes for, uh, for your VMs. You can uh, mount the Cinder uh, volumes into the VMs and unmount them again and uh, move the data this way. Uh, then Neutron, which is uh, networking as a service, allows you to define virtual networks uh, between the VMs so that the VMs only see um, other VMs that the user defined that they should see and not anything else. Uh, then it's orchestration service, Heat. Uh, which can launch whole stacks of virtual machines, not only one virtual machine like Nova, but whole stacks. It actually builds upon Nova, and it can uh, also do things like uh, launch one VM first, then fetch some data from it, maybe its IP address, and use that data as a configuration input for the other VM that is going to be launched. Uh, then it's OpenStack metering service, Silometer, that's uh, for uh, for tracking resource usage in the cloud, uh, seeing how, which users use how much uh, resources, could be storage, could be VM, could be networking. And uh, last component is uh, OpenStack dashboard, also known as Horizon. It's a face of the OpenStack. It's a web UI uh, through which you can interfa interface with the components. So 
let's just see what, oh, we're not going to see that. Okay. So this is just, just visual uh, of what I said. At the bottom there's uh, the identity service which provides authentication for all of the other components. Then the next layer is, uh, is are the core components that provide some functionality to each other. As I uh, talked about the block storage network, compute, image, and object storage. And then on top of it is the OpenStack uh, dashboard Okay. So what are the architectural needs of OpenStack? First, it needs to be uh, really scalable. It should scale to thousands of nodes, really big data centers. Next, it needs to be modular, uh, which means uh, you can deploy only parts of OpenStack, not the whole thing. So maybe you don't need Swift, so we'll, you will not deploy Swift. Maybe you only need Swift, so you'll only deploy Swift. Uh, it needs to be flexible because, as I said in the beginning, it really changes fast. New projects are being included, so it should uh, accommodate for that change. So let's take a look from the lower level inside of the component. Component is composed of multiple services, which you can scatter around machines. Again, hundreds, thousands of machines, uh, and they communicate each with each other. Uh, inside a component, they communicate by either accessing a shared MySQL or MariaDB database or preferably via AMQP, um, RPC calls. Uh, this is quite a tight integration, but it's okay because uh, all of the uh, services within one component share the same Git repo and the changes to them happen synchronously. So it can't happen that you would call an RPC uh, call and the other service uh, wouldn't know that what you're talking about. And also the RPM and DEP updates happen uh, synchronously. Now if we go level up between the components, uh, then the components each expose a REST API, uh, which is like the outside interface of that component. It should be preferably the only outside interface of that component. Uh, that REST API, uh, or to that REST API connects a client library, which is just translating uh, the REST API back to some Python uh, API, or uh, could be another language, but in the core OpenStack there are just Python clients. And uh, that client library is included within something. That something uh, can be either another OpenStack service, uh, trying to use uh, the functionality within this service, and uh, it can also be the web UI or uh, CLI, and it can also be your custom stuff. Uh, you can, as a user of OpenStack, you can build anything you want on top of the REST APIs that OpenStack exposes. Uh, the APIs are versioned, so within one version, the changes are always backwards compatible, meaning that you can only add resources and att attributes to resources, but you cannot uh, remove or change meaning of resources and attributes. And OpenStack as a whole is uh, released twice a year and the community takes care that when the release is being cut, uh, all of the APIs are in a state that uh, works together smooth. So let's take a look at a detailed diagram again. It's not very, don't worry, we're not gonna go through it all. It's just, it's just <laughs> to show that uh, the square things are components and you can see that they're really like tightly integrated using the database and the message queue and these things are uh, particular services which can have, there can be like many instances of them and uh, so, and you see that the communication between the components is uh, much more loose just 
uh, scarce usage using the REST, uh, RESTful APIs. This is much more tightly integrated. So if you would, for example, uh, launch a VM, you would talk to the Horizon interface, which would then uh, fetch a token from Keystone. It, we, it would use the token to tell Nova API, hey, launch a VM. Uh, Nova API would uh, talk to Nova Scheduler and say, pick me a bare metal machine where I can launch this VM. Then Scheduler will select one of your thousands of nodes in your data center and uh, talk to the Nova compute service uh, running on that uh, node. And the Nova compute is going to fetch uh, image from Zans, which is in turn going to, f uh, going to fetch the image from Swift. And when it gets back, it's going to talk to the hypervisor on that node, say libvirt uh, backed by KVM, to launch the actual VM. OK. So if I wanted to create a new component, what would I do? It's really quite simple. I would expose a, a, rest, a RESTful API endpoint, and I would uh, register that endpoint within Keystone so that other uh, services which want to use my API can find it easily. And I can also do it in reverse. I can use Keystone to find the other, other endpoints, other services, uh, which I would like to use. For example, store some data in Swift. And I would also have to use uh, Keystone for any, any operation that somebody wants to do. I would have to consult with Keystone whether they have the right to do it or not. And um, then I would just create a Python library and a CLI uh, for that uh, RESTful API. And if I want a UI for it as well, I would extend the dashboard, the Horizon dashboard. So just to summarize my part somehow, what I think are the impo important principles of OpenStack architecture. I think uh, the RESTful APIs are a pretty good idea because they give us some uh, common conventions. They force us to formulate solutions to problems in a common way that uh, everybody can easily understand and somehow anchor the whole, whole project. Uh, they also allow for a nice loose binding between the components. And one of the examples uh, of this is that the internal APIs are often the same as external APIs. So if I want, as an external user, uh, launch a VM through Nova, I'm going to use the very same API as Heat uses when it wants to launch the stack of VMs. Then there's a pr principle called single source of truth which means that if I want to consult uh, data about images, I go to Glance, and no other components should do any, any caching or proxying of those calls, so that you always go to just one spot so that uh, components cannot, um, cannot uh, get in, into this synchronization. So um, most importantly, this is uh, useful when uh, having the users if we had uh, users for Nova separate from no users uh, from Heat and then we try to map somehow or, or merge the uh, user bases, it would be a big mess. So this is very good that we have Keystone. And another thing that is quite important in my opinion is that uh, we have a different, um, we have separate uh, APIs and the UIs. So uh, for example, when I used to work on a Rails project before, a uh, quite common pattern there is to uh, use the same controllers for rendering uh, API and UI. And then you start hitting things like, I really need to load a little bit more data for uh, the UI. So um, I will, so you start branching uh, the fe logic of fetching data. Then you uh, need some, uh, branching in uh, logic of saving data, and you start branching and branching, and then it gets really messy really quickly. So it's, I think it's really good to have uh, the UI and the API strictly separated. Uh, it also forces us to um, have the complete functionality in API, because uh, you could get into, uh, otherwise you could get into pressure, like we need to show something nice to the users, so we just build the API real quick, and we, you know, uh, proper API, uh, we're just going to build the UI real quick and uh, proper data model and proper API, that's going to come later. 
and you're never gonna get to it and you're gonna end up in mess. So I think it's really nice that uh, the UI built on top of API forces us to do nice and useful APIs. So that, that's about all. Uh, this, this is, uh, these are the sources. This, this last link is really good. There's uh, much more explanation of the detailed diagram that you saw. And this is my Twitter link. I'm gonna uh, share the slides on Twitter. And you can give feedback on this link, how the talk went. And now I'm gonna give the stage to Martin and then we can have questions. Hear me? Yep. Okay, so hi, my name is Martin. Um, I work on uh, PackStack uh, in Red Hat. Uh, uh, PackStack can be described as uh, another uh, OpenStack installer. We have a lot of them because it's quite hard to install OpenStack, so we're trying hard to make it easier a little bit for you. So PackStack. Uh, the uh, purpose of Packstack is uh, so uh, like newcomer for OpenStack can install uh, OpenStack uh, as easy as it's possible. Uh, Packstack is pretty new project. It's only one year since Derek Higgins started with it. And uh, right now it's me, uh, Ivan Chavero, which is uh, located in Mexico and uh, Francesco, which is also here in Brno. Francesco Waller, sorry. So, uh, what's under the hood of Packstack? Packstack is uh, based on a uh, pretty simple uh, framework uh, called Overt Installer. It's framework for, oh, yeah, Overt Installer. It's framework for uh, command line interface installers uh, and uh, on top of that there are uh, logic how to use Puppet and Puppet modules to do the actual installation. Anybody knows, uh, don't know who, uh, it, uh, what is uh, Puppet? One? Okay, so Puppet is a tool for installation <laughs> For installation, it, you basically describe uh, what you want to have on your host in a text file, which is called uh, manifest in, in Puppet world, and then Puppet will install all 
all things which uh, was described, which were described in, in the module for you. So uh, the principle of Packstack is that uh, since still uh, Puppet will install everything for you, but uh, the manifest you will have to write if you want, if you would like to use only only Puppet. So the principle of Packstack is that uh, Packstack will generate all manifest required to to install OpenStack for you from the single uh, config file, and then those manifests are uh, distributed to hosts, which you selected uh, in the config file, and uh, also Packstack will run Puppet for you to install whatever is needed. So here are a uh, few examples. Uh, first one is uh, when you want uh, everything in one host, you will just run Packstack minus minus all in one and uh, wait about uh, half an hour and uh, your OpenStack instance is installed. Uh, the second one is uh, when you want to have a little more advanced installation, uh, you will use install host. The first uh, IP in, in, the, uh, in the parameter is uh, the controller uh, node and the second and third uh, IP address are, are uh, compute nodes. Uh, you probably heard uh, from Mirka what compute nodes are. So no, or, or Nova node, Nova compute node, okay. And uh, the third one is if since Packstack is uh, currently uh, uh, pretty much configurable, uh, you can uh, uh, change anything you want, uh, what is provided, of course, by Packstack. So first you will generate the, co the, the answer files or the config files, uh, then you will edit it, and then you will run Packstack with that uh, config file and Hopefully, the installation will uh, end and you will have what you wanted. Since Packstack is pretty much a young project and uh, it's dependent on many, many things, there are lots of issues, so uh, please try uh, the third example only if you know what you are doing because usually if you will try any, anything else than all in one, it will fail. So that's it for me. Uh, I will show you a demo. Uh, I will run uh, Packstack only one in my VM of uh, its Federal 20 VM. Hopefully it won't fail. And uh, in case you have any questions, I guess we can start with Yirka right now and I in the meantime, I will prepare my, my demo. That's it for me. Uh, yes, so uh, well, like, um, how do you mean what about scaling? Yeah, so the single source of truth is mainly meant on the, on the component level or on service level. And you can, that doesn't mean you don't, you cannot do uh, high availability setups or load balancing setups. That that's still like, uh, you can make your MySQL inst instance highly available even though it's, you know, <laughs> quite a lot of work. Uh, and uh, you can make, uh, you can run multiple instances of those services, uh, like for example, uh, the Keystone service, which uh, gives the user data. But um, what is meant by single source of truth is that you always go to Keystone. Uh, that you don't cache on Nova level, for example, some information about users. So, so that you always query Keystone. And uh, you can have it load balanced, but uh, 
they're going to work on the same database of, of users, the, the instances of Keystone. I'm sorry, could you could you speak up a little bit? I'm sorry, I think I didn't hear some of some parts of the question and it should be <laughs> I'm sorry, c could you please maybe come down or something? <laughs> I think it was near from, from that part. Uh, my, my question is simple. Keystones looks like a potential the Achilles point for all the solution. Mm -hmm. How do you can uh, guarantee the availability for the rest of the component if constant fails? Do you can duplicate in some way? Uh, yes, so Thank <laughs> thanks. That kind of relates to the, to the uh, question before. Uh, you should be able to set up all the components of OpenStack in, in a ma manner that uh, will guarantee the high availability of the service. So it ranges from uh, the very low parts like MySQL database or um, uh, message queue, the MQP uh, message bus like uh, Cupid or, um, or uh, RabbitMQ. Uh, and also the services. So everything should be um, set up in a high availability manner from the very bottom to the very top. So if uh, one ser server goes out, it shouldn't uh, affect you. you wanna continue? Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, for some reason, my VM does not have uh, uh, connectivity to YAM repositories, so... Uh, Yeah, uh, well, I have connectivity to, to to internet from my laptop, but the VMs don't, and right now I don't really know how, uh, why. So, sorry, but uh, like, basically, when your VM will be able to connect to internet, uh, you will just run fast stack all in one. I, uh, I. Uh, uh, skipped few installations here because we do, we would need we, we would not need it for a demo but uh, that's it and you will see lots of those uh, skips and then finally you will see something like uh, installation completed successfully with uh, this additional info and everything will be uh, functional unfortunately it's not uh, I was, uh, I thought that it will do something like that, so I ran installation uh, before I came here uh, in the office. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, after the successful installation, you will get something like this in, in your uh, dashboard. It is, it is not working, unfortunately, <laughs> because if for some reason I, it did not survive to my uh, way here. So sorry for that. Yep, question. Uh, 
uh, since uh, well, for for each uh, uh, major uh, open stack releases like Grizzly and Havana, we have uh, few few uh, releases. Uh, we are trying to release as as soon as possible. If there is some some fi uh, bug or we have some fix for for some bugs and for new uh, features also. So like there is. It, it, there is no no schedule for that. We just do that uh, as as it comes. Any other question? Yep. No. Okay. So thank you. Oh. Uh, yeah. Sure. I can. Uh, So this is a generated uh, answer file uh, by all in one, and like you can you can uh, choose uh, which components you want to install. Uh, you can choose uh, usually uh, which component on which host should run, and uh, also few other uh, options. There are lots of them. Uh, you will need to read a little bit if you want to know what exactly all of those means. But uh, uh, for each for each uh, uh, parameter, there is a <coughs> at least brief uh, command. So hopefully, it will help you a little bit. But if you don't know what you are doing, then don't use anything else than all in one, please. Yep. And finally, that's it. Anything else? Sorry for the fair demo. <laughs>